What is up guys, welcome back to the channel We just went through SummerSlam A pay-per-view that didn't have Roman Reigns in it I'm concerned right now Is Vince McMahon okay? Because it's 2019 Roman Reigns is currently an active roster member And he didn't have a match At one of the big four pay-per-views That is actually one of the real shockers of tonight And we only got one title change That was Seth Rollins defeating Brock Lesnar There was a major heel tease And a big angle cut from the whole event so we're gonna talk about all of that in this SummerSlam 2019 review and roundup but before we get into it just in case you guys are new to the channel make sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications because not only we're on the road to 100k but you want to join us because we are always here talking about pro wrestling keeping you up to date on all the latest and continuing the discussion of what's going on in the wrestling world nonetheless let's get into it and before we even round it up let me get my general thoughts and some of the latest reports out of the way so of course there were a lot of news indicating that SummerSlam was going to be a bit different this year because it was quote-unquote rated TV 14 that clearly didn't get to happen except for maybe one moment in the show where we had Bray Wyatt kind of twisting the neck of Finn Balor a little bit too much it was certainly a bit aggressive but again it wasn't really TV 14 like it was being advertised as I mentioned this could have been a mistake and it seems like it was a mistake because nothing too insane went down NXT TakeOver Toronto was actually a bit more hardcore if we really want to be using that word another big report that we had heading into the event was that Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan were possibly going to be doing something maybe a match or more than likely a big segment to continue their storyline that they've been building for the last couple of weeks where the attacker of Roman Reigns are quote-unquote Daniel Bryan and Rowan more specifically Rowan well come the show of course we didn't get any Roman Reigns instead they just recapped everything that has been happening over the last couple of weeks and the only addition to it was that Buddy Murphy was at a match against Apollo Crew in the pre-show and Rowan came out and laid out Buddy Murphy we were supposed to get some updates throughout the night and we really didn't they kind of teased it that something was going to be happening and that we were going to keep getting an update but it never happened so as reports indicate WWE did cut a big end angle that was supposed to go down between all of these guys ringside states that wwe wrote a big segment out of the show involving roman reigns daniel bryan and rowan instead they only alluded to the storyline and showed a highlight reel from the previous weeks with no addition to the story as i just mentioned we don't know the reason why they took it out of the script which is why i'm wondering if vince mcmahon is okay because a show without roman reigns in 2019 it's unheard of regardless though this view it's gonna continue and whatever they wrote is probably gonna be given to us this upcoming week on Raw or Smackdown and now let's get into the actual show and recap what went down so first and foremost I did enjoy SummerSlam this year there were a lot of singles matches and I'm actually a big fan of that but I'm not gonna lie that a good tag team wrestling match was definitely missing from it I do like the fact that the event was only three hours and a half but there were some illogical decisions sprinkled through there and there were some matches that were really not not that great we did got a big highlight on the pre-show so let's go back to the start and get into it so the first match was the cruiserweight championship match again on the kickoff drew gulak defeating only lorkin throughout the night they also sprinkled some drake maverick r-truth and carmella 24 7 championship segments that were decent but it didn't really lead to a title change or anything like that second match of the night we had buddy murphy defeating apollo cruz but this was by disqualification because Rowan ended up attacking him the highlight of the pre-show came when Elias played a song about how much he hates Toronto and then he gets interrupted by none other than WWE Hall of Famer Edge who spears him into the next day this was actually a pretty cool moment and of course Edge got the hometown return and welcome that he deserves the third match of the pre-show was WWE Tag Team Championship match Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross defeating the Iconics and then we get into the main card First match of the night was the submission match for the Raw Women's Championship, Becky Lynch versus Natalia. For what it was, this was a decent match. But it was also confusing that the commentators keep indicating that this was a no disqualification match, no count outs and all that stuff, no rope breaks and so on. But in the end, it didn't really matter because they didn't really use weapons and so on. But it was a good back and forth between Natalia and Becky Lynch. And it is worth mentioning that there were some reports indicating that WWE 
WWE was expecting Becky Lynch to get booed out of the building because of course she was facing Natalia who is also from Canada even though she's on the other side of Toronto but whatever Natalia was supposed to receive a massive welcome there and she did but in the end Becky Lynch was just over popular there were a couple of backstage reports indicating that at the gorilla position WWE was surprised by the heavy positive reaction that Becky Lynch was getting in that match so it might not feel like it to many of you guys but she's still popping off she's still crazy popular I just hope that WWE booked her a little bit better with the next challengers Becky of course won this match by submission with the disarmer up next we got Goldberg versus Dolph Ziggler and Goldberg won this match in like a two to three minute match I marked out for like 30 seconds because Dolph Ziggler started off by super kicking Goldberg twice so I was losing my mind but it didn't lead to anything it just lead to a spear that Dolph Ziggler just sold like he's broken in half and made Goldberg look like a million bucks. Dolph Ziggler after the match still called out Goldberg said that he's the best in the world and that he wouldn't be able to beat him again. Out comes Goldberg and at this point I was tired of listening to Goldberg's theme song. Rings and repeat and great Goldberg just got a bunch of million dollars for three spears. Hey he's a legend though right? I'm just waiting for Dolph Ziggler to ultimately get the ultimate upset you know? Up next we got the United States championship match AJ Styles defeating Ricochet I don't think this match was better than the one they had on Raw a month or so ago but it was still a decent match we had Ric Flair dancing it off backstage with the Street Profits fourth match of the night we got the Smackdown Women's Championship match Bailey defeating Ember Moon the end of this match came with Bailey hitting the Bailey to belly suplex from the top rope and getting the pin for victory on Ember Moon honestly probably my least favorite match of the night it wasn't really that too crazy up next we had Kevin Owens defeating Shane McMahon and of course we had Elias outside as the enforcer of the match but that didn't matter as the referee was removing a chair that was already in the ring Kevin Owens kicked Shane McMahon in the groin then hit his stoner to win the match to be more specific it was a savage low blow by Kevin Owens then we had a Charlotte Flair defeating Trish Stratus and this is exactly what I love from a part-timer or from a legend coming back be like Trish Stratus, come out there and actually give us a decent match. She just made her money worth. Whatever Vince McMahon is paying her for this match, I will say double it because this was a decent match. She really trained to be good at this match and Charlotte did a great job at making her look good and she was looking good by herself. So props to Trish Stratus. Of course, the right person won. Charlotte doesn't need it, but it's good to have the current roster go over in matches like this. Up next, we got Kofi Kingston versus Randy Orton, ending in a double count now. This wasn't a bad match. I see a lot of people complaining about it. The issue here is that the ending sucked and it didn't make any sense at all. We're talking about a WWE Championship match and it's just gonna end in a double count now. They literally did this years ago with AJ Styles and Samoa Joe. I think it was last year. I'm not too sure. And people hated it. Now they doing it again, again at SummerSlam as well. Of course, this feud is gonna continue and that double count I just came out of nowhere there were a bunch of other matches here tonight that superstars spent minutes and minutes outside of the ring fighting it off and the referee wasn't counting to 10 so it made no sense for this rep to do it on the biggest championship match that they have in the night besides the universal championship rightfully so the crowd was chanting BS up next we got the Finn Bray Wyatt defeating Finn Balor if I'm mispronouncing that don't worry about it anyways this was actually great presentation it wasn't like a five star match but it did what it needed to do it had to have Bray Wyatt come out there dominate and have an amazing presentation and that's what they did the entrance was one of the best that I've seen in recent years it felt like it was an NXT entrance because you guys know they go hard at it on NXT when it comes to these entrances so it was awesome the remix to his theme song was also amazing and then the end of him walking out from this match was great during the match itself you could feel the horror that Bray Wyatt is supposed to bring and I think WWE did a great job here in the end we had Bray Wyatt winning by countering the coup de gras with the mandible claw which I guess is gonna be his new finisher he did try to do sister Abigail so that's still a finisher slash signature that he's gonna be doing but the mandible claw seems to be the real finisher before that pinfall and then for the main event we got Universal Champion Seth Rollins defeating Brock Lesnar and I'm gonna clap it up here for Brock Lesnar because once again he showed up and he actually went to work i said it before
or Brock Lesnar work amazing with guys like Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, and so on. He is great with these cruiserweight and light heavyweight WWE superstar, much more better than anything that we probably seen with him against Roman Reigns. Cause he just able to do more with these guys that are lighter and that are able to move around the ring a bit quicker. This might have been the longest match that we have seen from Brock Lesnar in quite a while. The only one I'm thinking about right now was AJ Styles versus him two years ago and Daniel Bryan versus him last year. The end of this match came when we had Seth Rollins counter an F5, hit a super kick and then connected with the stomp and successfully pinned Brock Lesnar. This was the third stomp of this match and they did a lot in it including breaking announce tables and going back and forth like we almost never see Brock Lesnar do. So that is the full recap of the show. I'm gonna give this SummerSlam a thumbs up even though of course it wasn't like out of this world. There wasn't anything that ultimately shocked us completely but it was still a solid show. The last thing I do want to talk about though is going back to that Bray Wyatt versus Finn Balor more specifically Finn Balor because during the pre-show they teased this big heel turn for Finn. We had Finn backstage and the OC. Finn is congratulating them that they've been winning a lot of championships and then the OC talk about how Finn might need some help with Bray Wyatt tonight and that if he needed that help from the OC all that he had to do was ask. The segment kind of ended right there with Finn Balor thinking it and as we know according to reports Finn Balor is going to be stepping away for a month or two so it begs the question that maybe when Finn Balor comes back they're already planting the seed for that heel turn and him to join the OC. That would be incredible and it is the fresh start that he needs and that we've been asking for him. Anyways guys that is what I got for you in this roundup and review for SummerSlam. If you enjoy don't forget to elbow drop that like button and let me know down in the comments below do you enjoy SummerSlam this year? What will be your rating for it? Anyways I win the world to 100,000 subscribers. I'm much of the out. Dig it.